This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by Elmec and their EV Duty Smart Home Charger. Electric vehicles are gaining more and more popularity with every year. And with that, there's just one small problem. They're extremely hard still to get your hands on. Today, we're taking a look at one of the best entry level electric vehicles that money can buy. This is the 2023 Chevrolet Bolt EUV. So let's talk a little bit about the trims. You can get this in the basic LT trim, but this one that we've been driving this week is the Premier trim. It comes with a Bose sound system. You get adaptive cruise control. I find that weird that it's on the Premier trim, but it doesn't come standard. That's a little sucky. You got a 360 degree camera, leather seats, heated steering, as well as you have a digital rear view mirror as well. And I love that. So it's nice to have on the Premier trim. You can also add on Super Cruise, which we'll talk about a little bit later. It is a, about a $2,000 add on if you want it, but it is a great add on if you can use it in your area. So let's talk about what's under the hood. There is no front trunk. So there is literally something under the hood in the Bolt EUV. It's a lithium ion 65 kilowatt hour battery that does 200 horsepower, 260 pound feet of tour and it only comes in front wheel drive there's no all wheel drive available this year for the euv now let's talk about charging and it's a little bit of a slow charging electric vehicle that's why when i said it's an it's an entry level electric vehicle this is what i mean because 120 volts is going to get you about six kilometers per hour which is slow and then 240 volts you're gonna get a full charge in about seven hours and i guess that makes sense because last night i was actually out of charger charged from about 40 percent to 80 and i was there for around an hour it was, it was quite long actually and then your dc fast charging you're gonna get 160 kilometers in 30 minutes i wasn't at a super fast charger it was about a 50 kilowatt hour charger that i was at last night so the range was okay that i got for the time i spent but I wish it was faster. So that's all the great specs and numbers out of the way. Let's take a look at what the rest of the vehicle has to offer. Moving over to the front of the Bolt EUV, you have your nice daytime running LED headlights up here, the main headlight down there. I don't know why I expected the, the headlights to be a bit bigger, but they're effective for what you do. You also have really nice looking turn signals. They kind of did that nice animation in the front. Nice blacked out Chevrolet badge, front facing camera, a little bit of vent down there for cooling the battery and keeping things nice and up to temperature. A little bit of black and, and the blue electric blue on this car looks super nice as well. So overall, nice effective front end here. So moving on to the side profile of the Bolt EUV, you can see that the EUV is a little bit bigger than the normal Chevrolet Bolt that you can get as well, but it still has that compactness, which is nice. We've also got 17 inch wheels here and you don't actually hear a lot of road noise in the car. You can hear other people's road noise, but not your own. So that means the GM has done a good job of picking the right tires and also doing really good noise cancellation. You also have chrome on the door handles here with your one touch lock and unlock. That is a physical button, so it's not likely to freeze in the winter. A little bit of chrome on the bottom too, but I really like this blue and how it meshes with the black. It's very nice. So up a little bit more in the front, you got the Bolt EUV logo here in black. It's not really visible only if you're looking at it like this, but then you have your charge port. You press it once, it unlocks, and then you have this little orange button that peels down and that's where you're gonna plug your supercharger in, but you don't need it if you're just charging normally. And it's very useful. It's right there in the front. So you don't have to back up. I know a lot of people don't like to back up. So there you go. Chevrolet fix that problem for you. And you could be lazy and just drive straight up and no problem at all. So onto the back of the Bolt EUV now, you can see that there is no exhaust pipe because of course this is an electric vehicle. Some nice matte black here where it houses some sensors. Moving up a little bit, we have the rear view camera for your rear view camera, obviously. Then moving up even more than that, you got the black badge again with the Chevrolet badge. We like that a lot. Rear view wiper, nice camera here too, which is gonna give you your rear view mirror camera. And it doesn't get affected by snow because it's right under this little like spoiler thing that it's got here. I like how the blue meshes with the black. I also like how the taillights mesh into the body everything just looks nice and compact like the car's profile is so let's take a look at the trunk space the bolt uv there's a little bit less i got my charger right there ready to go but you can open up this little portion here and you got a whole bunch more storage space so if you need to put things underneath smaller things can fit underneath there and then your big stuff can go here if you fold down the seats there's a whole bunch of room in the rear seat a little bit less room in the trunk it's kind of like a trade-off there but if you fold those seats down you'll have room for just about anything you need. So moving on into the interior of the Bolt 
EUV. It's very spacious. It doesn't look like it would be on the exterior, but it actually is on the interior because it's an electric car. You kind of have a little bit more room than usual. The seats, when you look at it from the rear, they're kind of thin. You can cut, you can tell that they went for cost savings and, and not so much bolstering, but the comfort is there. So that's good. And we'll take that. I also have some power adjusting seats for the driver. There's no memory seats, but that's fine. Not a big deal. The steering wheel is very nice. I like the feel of it. There's a little bit of piano black on the sides, but it's, it's nothing terrible. This is where you're going to control your super cruise, your adaptive cruise control, everything like that. There's a little camera here for super cruise. And we'll talk about that in the driving. So you got a very nice digital gauge cluster display. That's going to show me my range, how much I'm regening, whether my one pedal driving is on or off, how much power I'm using and how much power I'm regaining. It will also tell me that my max charge cap capability is 400 kilometers forgot to mention that when we were outside but it is 400 kilometers and it is decent for what it is we have some nice chevrolet vents if you've been in like any chevrolet it's really like the same kind of thing a little bit of chrome a lot of piano black here when we come to the middle the infotainment screen is massive and very usable just like we saw on the on the terrain denali i love the infotainment there i love it here because it's the same thing you can customize your home screen. You can drag stuff around. I have a camera button here. It's going to show me my 360 degree camera, all the angles that I could ever want. I got a home button there, climate controls there, Spotify's built in, Alexa's built in. It's got a Wi-Fi hotspot. It just keeps going for the price point too. I mean, especially if you have the government incentives, this is really, really great to see. I also have an app called energy where I can click my energy and I can see exactly where the flow is. I could see the charging. I can change the, the limit that the battery will charge to. I can also see like a report card on what's impacting my charge. So what's taking the most range out of the car? Is it climate? Is it terrain? Is it outside temperature? Anything I can see all of it. And also, is it your technique? Are you pushing that throttle too heavy and are you using too much things? It'll tell you that all here as well as your charging history. So really nice and helpful stuff to see there. If you're into the analytics part, well, that's there for you. Moving on lower where this is where we have our heated seat controls and ventilated seats. Heated steering again, I love that. And GMC, of course, I expect it from them. So great that it's there. You also have some quick little buttons, uh, single zone climate control, but it is automatic. So I will take that nice wireless charging pad here that really holds the phone. Well, fits my big iPhone 14 pro max. That's a small flex. Then we also have a sport mode button. That's the only mode available track control off and your lane keep assist here. And then you have very, it's just very simple. The whole interior you get in bang, you know how to use it. Like it's a normal car, despite the fact that it's an EV, you have your gear selectors here. You pull up on the little levers and there it is. You have your one pedal driving on or off button there. And it's just all very simple. But again, a lot of piano black, which sucks because it gets fingerprinty. It's already scratched up. I just wish that the manufacturers would just stop putting piano black in cars. It just doesn't make sense at this point. Plenty of storage as well in the interior. I got a little bit of storage here underneath here. Plenty of leg room. I'm very comfortable in the seating position. Let's talk a little bit about the rear. I was actually so shocked at the amount of space that I had in the rear. Again, from the exterior, it doesn't look like you're going to have that much space, but then you climb in. And since there's no center stack, since there's no transmission, there's no center stack in the rear. So you can move side to side with ease. It is so nice and it's so comfortable to be back there with that much leg room, especially if you're a little bit taller. The headroom is okay. I'm just kind of like at the roof with my head when it comes to the headroom, but I love the leg room. It's very impressive. So overall, the interior of the Bolt EV, very, very good place to spend time. Let's take this thing out on the road. So here we are driving the Bolt EUV. Now, I've been driving it this week in a little bit of like colder weather, not extreme cold like we've been having. We're approaching what I hope is the tail end of winter because if I get more snowstorms, I am going to absolutely lose it. But this car is rated for about 400 kilometers on a full charge. I've been getting about that right now. It's telling me like 330 if I charge it to full right now. So I'm losing a little bit because we still are in the minus weather, still kind of cold for the battery. So it is doing a little bit of work to keep that battery warm as I'm driving along. And this is your entry level SUV. So we're not expecting crazy things. The only thing is, is that without government incentives, it's hard to recommend that you get this vehicle at MSRP because the preferred version is 51,000 and 51,000 you're you're crossing over into Ionic 5 range which has better charging it's bigger it's faster it's just got a lot more stuff so I think Chevrolet needs to be very careful with their pricing here because they're right on that edge of getting into the competitors market when they don't have a car like the competitors the good news though is if you have government incentives like we do here in Quebec we got 5,000 from Canada and 7,000 from Quebec. This is a 
hell of a bargain. Very nice. It's loaded to the teeth for what it would cost you if you include all those government incentives. So for that, it's right there. But I mean, just if you don't have them, it's, it's gonna be a tough sell. Overall, the driving comfort actually impressed me. This car is surprisingly nimble in, in like high speed corners, even some like lower speed corners if you punch it with the traction control off. It's, you know, the tires will squeal just a little bit, but it pulls you through corners surprisingly well. It, like, I didn't expect it. And under braking, I've got quite a bit of feel and control. I wasn't expecting that at all because this is like your typical grocery getter. It saves you money, it's efficient, it's, it's electric. You get home, plug it in, boom, that's it, job done. But then you wouldn't expect it to have the sporty side, and it does. And that's really nice, so great job from Chevrolet for, for including that for us. And it's comfortable, just overall, the, the seats, you know, like I said, they're a little bit more on the cost-saving side, the more cost-effective side, but they're still really comfortable. I could see myself doing a road trip in here if a road trip was like feasible because of the range, like yeah, 400 kilometers is okay, but the charging infrastructure isn't there. So I would recommend doing a road trip until the charging infrastructure is there, until Tesla, almighty Tesla, decides to open up their charging stations to the regular EVs, the, you know, to the guys like the Chevrolet Bolt, then, I mean, it's just, I'd have a lot of range anxiety with it. All right, so I mentioned that this car does have a sport mode, and that's actually the only mode. There's no eco mode, there's no like saving mode or anything, so you just press the one button there on the dash, and it puts you right into sport mode, so I'll come to a stop here and then I'm gonna punch it in the Bolt EV. Let's go for a ride. Boom! That big electric hit, there it goes. We're going, we're going, we're all the way to the floor. Foot's all the way planted. And there's 100. So you can see, that as soon as I clicked it, it's instant, right? I mean, this car has 200 horsepower, plenty of torque, and it's 200 horsepower, bang, when you click the steering wheel, I mean, when you click the accelerator, you're gone. The thing is though, it only gives you that electric kick till about like 40 kilometers and then you're just kind of slowly accelerating. So it's not like as crazy as when we had the EV6 and it was absolutely like the whole way. No, no, this is more measured. It's more like, it's more mature, I guess. It's not so childish where you could just continue to press the throttle over and over and it will put you in the back of your seat forever. It's gonna give you that kick until 40 and then it's gonna top off. But passing slower traffic, no issue absolutely blow them away you know especially if they're not ev they can't keep up with it so it doesn't matter and you're being efficient so like right now i'm just driving and i'm doing about 84 kilometers i'm using only eight kilowatts to do that and that's very impressive i got a nice corner here that i'm taking very nice very planted the traction control's on or i don't feel like turning it off it's pointless right now but during the testing i did it also tells you the car does a really nice job of telling me how much power I'm using. If I'm driving with economical sense, it'll kind of, the dash will kind of turn yellow. There's like a circle and it will turn yellow to tell me that I'm using more power than it maybe should be and green if I'm right in the sweet spot. And it's usually green because I'm pretty much always in the sweet spot with the car. I'm not really speeding. I'm not doing anything crazy. It's your grocery getter. It's people, it'll bring people around. Plenty of room for the driver, plenty of room for the passenger, plenty of room in the back. It's like, again, it's impressive how much room is in that back seat. This car also does come with one pedal driving. So I can press the button here and then let go of the accelerator and then the car will start to slow down. While it's slowing down, it will give me power back into the battery and it will tell you just how much power is giving you back in the battery. So it's nice, it's, an, it's a very small amount, but that very small amount adds up over time. City driving, stoplights, traffic, you know, you're going, putting the brake on or not really, because you're not really using your brakes, you're actually using the engine to brake when you do that. So it's really usable. So for an example, I'm coming up to a stop sign here, so I'll gradually let off the accelerator and I will come to near a complete stop. As you can see here, boom, and I'm like regaining 20 kilowatts of power while I'm doing that. So that's excellent. And obviously when you're rolling down a hill doing that, you're just kind of coasting, well, that even more power is coming back to you. So it's great. I have some nice volume controls here behind my hands that I can turn the volume up and change the track. And then I have one paddle shifter. It's interesting. There's only one paddle shifter and it controls your regen. So while I have my one pedal driving engaged, I can let go of my accelerator and then hold this. And then it actually increases the regen. It actually like breaks harder. So like if I'm, if I don't time it right and I don't let go of the accelerator far ahead enough, I can actually hold this and it'll brake just a little bit harder. So I actually never have to use the brake when I'm driving. This is great. Now, my favorite feature by far of the Bolt EUV is that Super Cruise. Slam dunk on Tesla. 
like home run, absolute home run. It only works on mapped out roads, so just be careful when you're looking at it. It is a $2,000 add-on, and I think it might be a subscription service as well. I don't like that fact of it, but the fact that it's there is really, really great, right? So make sure it's on mapped out roads. Make sure that you look at that before you buy it. Otherwise, it will be useless to you. So I drive on the 20 and on the 40. Both of those highways are already mapped out, so that's excellent. It works perfectly. I'll include some footage here of me doing it on my drive home. I can basically sit here, cross my arms, look around, enjoy the scenery, and there you go. And then basically how it works is you have to have your adaptive control, cruise control on, and then you press a button that will engage Super Cruise. It'll tell you what to do. It'll tell you like, oh, center the car in the lane so that Super Cruise can be engaged, or, you know, or this road isn't mapped out, you're on your own, buddy, and you can only use the adaptive cruise, which is fine. I mean, I like the fact that it's included the adaptive cruise. I don't like the fact that you have to get the premium model just to get it. That sucks, that should be standard. Adaptive cruise control Chevrolet, that should be standard, 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 but Super Cruise is perfect. It's really good, really usable for your road trips or even just for your daily commute, right? Like I drive the car to the highway and then I essentially stop driving. And the great thing is, is the fact that, you know, Tesla drivers aren't using their autopilot on back roads because it doesn't work well. It's not effective. The software just isn't there yet. And not to mention to get like that full self-driving thing, that's a $20,000 add-on and that price is only going up, which is ridiculous. So that's why I say that, te that Chevrolet has gotten a slam dunk on Tesla because on the highway it's perfect. And you have a little camera here that's gonna watch your eyes so you can completely go hands-free. And if you're not looking enough, it will warn you you aren't looking enough. And eventually I'm sure it will turn itself off. I didn't want to test that because I didn't really want the thing to pull me over or do anything crazy, but it's got a little camera that's going to watch your eyes. You have to be paying attention still to the road at all times. And you can't really circumvent that. If you cover the sensor and try to start Super Cruise, it won't start because it can't see you. Whereas Tesla, you can just put like a rubber band on the steering wheel and it'll think you're holding the steering wheel the whole time. It doesn't have any cameras to show that you're paying attention at all. So Super Cruise is so good in this. So final thoughts for the Bolt EUV. Overall, I've had a very, very good time and it saved me money this week. Usually, like I say all the time, we have to fill up these cars before we bring them back. And, you know, I filled up from about 40% to 80% last night. It took about like an hour at the charging station, but it cost me like $12, like $12, $13. That's really good. And gas prices are only rising. They're inconsistent. The electricity prices, however, are pretty consistent. You just plug in at home too. If you have a home charger, then this car is absolutely perfect. You're never gonna actually need to visit a fast charger unless you're doing a road trip, which I don't really recommend. Overall though, comfort's great. Driving feels great. It's got a little bit of a kick to it. So, you know, it is kind of fun and it can kind of let loose a little bit when you need it to. And all those things are really good. And like I said, Super Cruise, I love Super Cruise. I hopefully get to see more of Super Cruise from GM because it's such a good iteration, such a good idea. And just use a, it's just useful. It's just so useful. So yeah, I think that is going to do it for the Chevrolet Bolt EV and for my test drive this week. If you made it this far in the video, you gotta subscribe. There's absolutely no question about it. You can't you can't watch like 15 minutes of a video and then not subscribe to PRN. That doesn't make sense. We got Niall back doing some interesting stuff that he finds at the dealership. And the fun part of those videos is that you can buy most of the videos, most sorry, most of the videos. No, you can't buy the videos, but you can you can buy most of the cars that Niall is showing off in his videos, which is so cool. And like I say all the time, nobody does it better than us. We're the best duo on YouTube. Fight me, fight me over it. You can't find a better one. Unfortunately, we can't do videos together because he lives in Ontario. I live in Montreal, but maybe one day we will get back together and, and you know do a video in the same press car. That would be fun to do. But with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here before I ramble too much. Follow me on Instagram. Follow Niall on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe, like if you like the video. Let us know what you think. Are you in the market for a Bolt EUV or any other type of electric vehicle? And how does it compare in your area? Do you even see a lot of Bolt EUVs in your area? Because I actually haven't. And that's disappointing because this car is really good and it deserves to be on the road. So let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time. Take care.